I, I don't know how I'm still here, to be honest. It's a daily decision to continue to live, despite my baby not. and I've been documenting a lot of my mental health around grief on my blog and on Instagram and Facebook and all of that but not so much of my like physical postpartum symptoms one of the biggest symptoms that I've had is hair loss and postpartum hair loss is really really common but I had no idea how much would fall out it is very I don't know if you can tell in this video and you probably haven't known me before I had onyx and so you're like and you look the same but like you can see the white right through my hair and my hairline right here or not the hairline the part is really really like I don't know it's wide and then if I go over here same thing this right here has always been part of my hairline but it's a little bit more it's just really really thin and I have absolutely no volume in my hair so it just it really really sucks and that's probably been the one that I've noticed the most and the second one is that my eyesight is absolutely horrible my right eye has been progressively getting worse as I've gotten older and I should be wearing glasses as it is but I don't I have like a weird tick when I wear glasses where I just move my nose up and down like a rabbit a lot like I'm smelling something and I constantly lift my glasses even if I don't need to so that's why I haven't been wearing glasses in a while and then a third symptom is that my skin has been really really bad and you probably can't tell as much in this video because the lighting brightens my face but I have a lot on my chin and I had a lot on my forehead but they've gone away but there's a ton on my chest and on my back and I'm just like where are you coming from I have never ever had like even pimples really until I got pregnant and when I was pregnant with onyx it was the worst when I was around I want to say eight weeks and I was just like breaking out like all over my forehead here and then all down here those seem to be the most common places for me and I don't really know what to do because to be honest I'm horrible at skincare I have never really had issues with my skin and so the most I do is take a makeup remover wipe and some really really basic face wash so that's kind of sucked and I'm getting older so I should probably get better at taking care of my skin at this point. After that I guess it's the fourth symptom is that I have developed a lot more body hair and I've like never had hair in my arms until I got pregnant and I started developing a lot of hair on my arms when I was pregnant with Onyx and it's just like hasn't gone away and so I don't know if you can tell no you can't see at all on this video but I have a lot on my arms and I'm Mexican so Mexicans typically have a lot of arm hair but I just never have so it's definitely been noticeable and my family commented on it a lot when I was pregnant and also I developed belly hair when I was pregnant with Onyx and it hasn't gone away and it's kind of bittersweet because like it's on my body right and so it's a constant reminder that Onyx isn't here but it's also a reminder that he was here and so it just it brings a lot of emotions like just having to be in this body um yeah that's it for the symptoms in terms of grief I don't know I'm doing a lot better than I thought I would be because I've had two miscarriages and uh, those were before Onyx and I never allowed myself to grieve those so I experience those very differently than I do experience life after Onyx, I guess. And so I'm doing a lot better than I thought I would. I thought I would never get out of bed. I thought I would never stop crying. I thought I would never shower, that I would never smile, never put on makeup, never like do anything. And here I am. So I'm definitely doing a lot better. I have a lot of ups and downs. It really comes in waves and I think people explain it like that a lot. The way that I usually explain it to others is that it's like sometimes I'm drowning, sometimes I'm floating, 
but I'm always in the water. So either way, I might look like I'm doing really good, but that doesn't mean that like I'm okay, you know? And so it's really hard having to accept the fact that I'll never be okay. Like I'll always be grieving, right? Grief is never going to end. It's gonna be different, but it's never going to stop. And that's really scary. I'm really having a lot of anxiety about Onyx's three month anniversary. And I'm not really completely sure why. I have anxiety in general, and it's definitely increased since Onyx passed away, but there are certain days that it's a lot worse, and I definitely feel it a lot more when these anniversaries are coming up. And then maybe with the holidays approaching, with Christmas approaching specifically, I think it's just like, it's gonna hit me hard. And so it's really, really scary. There's no way that I can prepare myself, but I feel it. So I'm trying to find ways that I can take care of myself and not completely break down because the breakdowns are really, really hard to recover from and sometimes they're necessary and they're really, really important to actually go through, but I don't want to have to go through that. So I'm trying to find ways that I can honor Onyx, but also like take care of myself, I guess. So in terms of grief, it's been hard, but at the same time, not as hard as I thought it would be. It's really a day by day thing. I don't know how I'm gonna feel on any given day. And I think I've talked about it on my blog or maybe Instagram, but every Sunday I have a really, really hard time because Sundays were the days that I would turn a new week when I was pregnant with Onyx. And even if I don't look at a calendar, even if I don't know that it's Sunday, my body knows. I will wake up crying sometimes and I will go to sleep with so much anxiety and then I'll look at my phone and I'll be like of course it's Sunday so it's been it's been okay um something that's really helped is that I participate on an online support group from the Star Legacy Foundation I'll link their information in the description but they're a really awesome organization that is national but for me I live in Minnesota and they're actually based here so that's really cool I participated in that support group online I think two or three times now and it's been helpful just to like process my feelings because everyone there is sharing things that I either like just understand or I've also gone through myself and so it really helps me process my own feelings even if I'm not sharing my own experience. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I just wanted to make this video because I think it's really important that we talk about our experiences postpartum after loss because even though we don't have our babies with us, we often still experience those same symptoms like hair loss and weird eyesight and things like that and we also might experience things like postpartum depression and for me it's a little bit difficult to figure out if if like my mental health is related to grief or if it's just related to me because I had anxiety and depression before I got pregnant and so grief and those things look very very similar and when you throw in something like postpartum depression it also looks very similar so when I was at my when was it um I think it was like my four or six week postpartum appointment with my OB she was having me go through this form of figuring out if I have postpartum depression or not which is standard for all moms after they give birth and I was like, I don't know how to answer this because these are all also related to grief. So I don't want to be diagnosed with something when it could just be grief related or it could be postpartum depression related or it could just be my normal anxiety that I've experienced my entire life. So mental health is really, really a big aspect of grieving, obviously. And postpartum, I'm just still trying to figure things out. Finding a new normal in something that isn't normal is really, really difficult. Like it's not... It's common, but it's not a normal thing to ha lose your baby, you know? Like, it's not part of the natural life cycle. You're not supposed to bury your children. They're supposed to bury you, right? So, that's been really hard, but like I said, I'm doing a lot better than I thought I would. That doesn't mean that I'm okay or that I'm moving on, because I'm not. I've just had to figure out how to live in that, despite everything. Um... What else? I guess just finding my new normal is really, really difficult. And I left my job shortly after Onyx was born. I was doing a fellowship and just circumstances with it made it so I couldn't continue it. 
if I wasn't like participating on a daily basis. So I left my job basically and that's been a really big issue for us because my partner Will has had to take on more hours at work to like sustain us and so I have recently started job searching again and I have a second interview for a place coming up and hopefully I get that because I think it'll be really really good for me to go back to work and it's at a place that really focuses on mental health and so I think it'll be really supportive of just everything that I'm going through and I've developed a lot of social anxiety since Onyx passed away and that's been really really difficult. I've always had anxiety like I said but I've never really had social anxiety and it's caused me to have a lot of anxiety attacks, a lot of panic attacks and it's just really, um, I don't know, it's really hard to see people who knew me when I was pregnant with Onyx because it's like you knew the old me and the me I was going to be and that's it's different now so the first time that i had a panic attack in a long long time was after onyx was born and i had to go to work to pick up something and it was going to be my first time i think it was to pick up a paycheck or something and literally as i was heading to the door my body started to shake and i could not open the door handle and i literally started to have a panic attack just standing in the doorway and I didn't know that it was hitting me until it already hit which is very different for me I can usually sense when I'm going to have like an anxiety attack but this panic attack specifically was very very different than anything I've ever experienced I suppose it was anxiety attack because panic attacks don't necessarily have to be linked to an event whereas anxiety attacks are so I don't know panic attacks anxiety attacks they're very connected so Whatever I was experiencing, it was really, really horrible and I like, beat myself up about it because I was just, I really wanted to go to work. I felt like it was good for my mental health to get up, get ready, and get out of the house. And I prepared myself to do that for like three days. I was like, you're going to get out of bed, you're going to get up, you're going to get ready, you're going to shower, you're going to brush your hair, and you're going to get out of this house. And I had done everything to get ready and then I got to the door and I couldn't do it. And it was horrible because financially, like, I need to work. And <sighs> mentally, I feel like I also need to work because I need to see other people. But those people were the ones who knew me before Onyx died. And I just didn't want to see the pity in their face. I didn't want to see like the sadness in their eyes. I didn't want them to hug me or tell me they're sorry. Um, so I avoided people for a really, really long time. I avoided people and I'm getting a little bit better, but I still don't really see anyone other than my immediate family. Um, and whenever I see any other people and they like knew that I was pregnant, it's really, really hard. I kind of deliberately make the conversation go to something else and it's really difficult because I want to talk about Onyx obviously I do it all the time but I want to do it on my own terms and it feels really difficult to do it on someone else's terms and I know that people just don't really know what to say and so sometimes they say the wrong things or sometimes they don't say anything at all but grief is just so exhausting because it's like you want someone to do something and then you don't and then if they do something you don't like it but if they don't do something you don't like that either so it's really just like all over the place so it's been really difficult in that aspect i don't really know how to continue living without onyx Obviously, I have been, but I don't really know how, because when you get pregnant, at least for me, my identity became Onyx's mom, and that was for five months, and so it wasn't as long as it is for other people, but 
for five months I was his mom and I'm still his mom obviously but he's not here so it's really difficult to go through life thinking you're going to be someone and then having that just taken away from you I I don't really know who I am anymore I guess because you know a lot of moms will talk about how they have a weird identity crisis after they have kids because everyone just thinks of them as a mom but they're still like a regular person too right like they still have hopes and dreams for themselves and hobbies and things like that and I kind of feel like that in a way but more like I don't know it's just really confusing I am really struggling with figuring out who I am after Onyx because I feel like I'm still the same person I was when I was pregnant with him but he's not here so it's a little bit different um we had really prepared our lives for him to be here and now that he's not it's it's um it's that whole new normal thing again it's just it sucks because it's not normal I still live in the place that I lived when I was pregnant with Onyx and that's been really really hard because every single day I see the places of what I was gonna do related to Onyx so like I see the place that I was gonna put his bassinet I see the place where I was gonna put his little play gym and his like clothes and things like that and that's really hard I don't really know what I'm saying this video has gotten really rambly so if you're still watching thank you but <sighs> life after loss really sucks it really really sucks and I don't know how I'm going to make it and obviously there isn't an answer to that you know people just do but I think about those who've had like 10 losses and I'm just like oh my gosh how do you breathe you know and you just keep pushing forward and that pushing forward sucks to do without your baby I don't know how I'm going to be six months from now his due date is coming up on January 13th so a little over a month away and the due date for my first pregnancy was really really hard for me it hit me like I don't even know what and it was just a horrible horrible day and I'm afraid that Onyx's due date is gonna be worse I feel like it's going to be reliving the day that he died all over again it kind of feels like he has two birthdays the day that he died and the day he was actually born and then the day he was supposed to be born life sucks and it could always be worse but it could always be better and it sucks that it's not better and I just, I don't know, I wish I was making updates on Onyx and the new things he was learning and how much he weighed and things like that, but instead I'm crying in a video about three months after him. <sighs> yeah. I guess that's it. Um, I started this video thinking I was just going to talk about my postpartum symptoms and a little bit about grief, but it's turned into like a bigger deal, obviously. I don't really know what to say. Just that it's hard. And I'm still here, so I'm pushing through, but it sucks. Every single day, it sucks. Some days more than others. But every day, every day. I wake up thinking like, oh, that he's still here or I think like did that really happen like sometimes it feels so surreal it feels like I was watching a movie like it didn't really happen to me um, but it did and here I am three months later just crying and I am 
I just started my second cycle after having onyx so I think being on my period might have to do a lot with the tears but it just I don't know I don't I don't know and I say that a lot because I really don't know I don't know what to do I don't know what to say I don't know how I'm still here to be honest it's a daily decision to continue to live despite my baby not and I guess I'm proud of myself for that but it sucks so that's where I'm gonna end this video I'm sorry that it's been all over the place um, it's probably gonna be really confusing so if you finish this entire video comment down below and thank you so much I will hopefully see you in my next video mm -hmm.